Hi boys and girls, my name is Joyce Raimondo. I'm an artist and an author, and we're gonna do a really fun project together today. We're gonna to make paper sculpture. A sculpture is different than a painting. A painting is flat, but a sculpture actually takes up space. It can be small, it can be big, and sculptures can be made from just about anything. Now to get some inspiration, would you like to go on a make-believe trip with me? We're gonna go around my town, East Hampton, New York, and we're gonna find some sculptures. Our first stop on our make-believe trip is Longhouse Reserve. Now when we come into Longhouse Reserve, you'll notice there's so many beautiful trees and plants and gardens, and hidden amongst all the trees are very, very surprising sculptures. Wow, look at this one. But look really closely. What did the artist do to make the rose different than any rose you've ever seen in real life? Did you say that the artist made the rose gigantic? That's right. It's even bigger than me. It's almost about the size of a tree. What I love about sculpture is you don't just look at it from one viewpoint. You can walk around it and you can look at it from all different sides. And wherever you look at it, it always looks different. Wow, this one is amazing. It's like a giant dome. I wonder if I can walk under one of those shapes. When you're inside the dome, it looks completely different. I can imagine that I'm in a spaceship or maybe I'm in a house on the moon. And when I look through the circles, I can see the sky and the trees, but everything looks different than the way it did when I stood outside the dome. What's hidden over here? What's in the bushes? Is that some kind of animal? It seems to have horns. Could it be a ram? I wonder what this sculpture is made of. Wow, you're not gonna believe it. This one is actually made out of clay, and when it hardens, that's called ceramics. Did you ever make a ceramic sculpture? These are really big ones, and I like the way they're in the bushes. They look so mysterious and lifelike. Curious about what's going to come next. This is the home of the famous artists Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner, who made abstract art. Jackson Pollock became especially famous for his paintings made by dripping paint from sticks. Come, let's go into their house together. Let's see what art is in there. Wow, look at that sculpture. Let's take a closer look. This sculpture is by Ronald Stein, Lee Krasner's nephew. What does this sculpture remind you of? Does it look like a castle? Or a city? Or some other magical place? Sometimes it's fun to look really close up. What could that be? A bird or a snail? What could this be? It looks like a shell to me. What is that? Looks like an alien spaceship. Can you tell what game that is? Hmm, it looks like chess pieces to me. Wow, what's this over here? I see some army men. And what is this down here? Those look like children's blocks. Can you figure out what all these other things are? They look to me like wood posts and rails and wood turnings, things you might see on a bed or even a chair. And look way up at the top. Something actually came out of there. Can you guess what it was? This was a water fountain. It was outdoors at the Guildhall Museum in East Hampton. I wonder if they have any outdoor sculptures now. Would you like to go with me? Let's go someplace else in East Hampton. 
and see where else can we find some sculptures. Let's discover together Guild Hall of East Hampton. This is the sculpture garden that's in the backyard. This is one of my favorite sculptures. Can you guess what it's made out of? Did you say metal? That's right, it's made from stainless steel. And what I love about this artwork is I get to look at it from all different sides. Come with me. What type of lines do you see? Are they straight? Are they curved? Are they wavy? What do you notice about the surface of the sculpture? Is it rough or smooth? Is it shiny? I love to look at sculptures because sometimes they actually remind me of other things. What does this sculpture remind you of? I imagine it could be a waterfall or it could actually be two people or maybe it's one person. I can imagine it in so many different ways. When you look at abstract art, you get to decide for yourself what it means to you. The name of this artwork is called Dance. I wonder why the artist called it Dance. What would you call it? I'm gonna show you later how you can make a sculpture in your own sculpture park. This will give us some inspiration. Are you ready to make the project now? We're going to use paper to make sculpture and these are the supplies that you'll need. Um, you'll need some glue sticks or regular school glue and some tape can come in handy but we're not going to use a lot of tape and of course a pair of scissors and all different kinds of papers would be useful because we're going to cut these up to make our sculptures I like to collect scrap papers as well. So any paper you have around the house is fine. It doesn't have to be colored like this. It could be computer paper. You could even make the sculpture out of magazine paper or newspapers. A marker might come in handy just for some finishing touches, okay? So boys and girls, before we actually make our sculpture, I wanna show you how you can take paper like this and make it three-dimensional. Now you see this piece, this is flat, but if I bend it, now all of a sudden it's three-dimensional because it takes up space. I can put something through it, right? I can hold it this way. I could look at it from that way. I could even look through it, okay? So I'm gonna show you some techniques for taking flat paper and making it three-dimensional. I want you to cut a whole bunch of strips in your paper. So watch, here's my paper, and then I am going to take my scissor for a walk. Are you gonna take your scissor for a walk? And now I have a strip. And now I'm gonna make another one. So let's go for a walk all across the paper. And I have two strips and one more. Now, boys and girls, can you think of something I can do to make this strip three-dimensional? Watch how I can make it pop out. Do it along with me. We're gonna make a loop. So if you take one end and attach it to the other, look what you get, a loop. And of course we need some glue. So I am going to take my glue and just put it on the end And then I'm gonna take this piece and attach it, you see? And now I have a loop. Let's get fancy. Watch this. This is my big loop, and now I'm gonna make a smaller one. So I'm gonna take this paper and I'm gonna cut it to make it smaller. And then I'm going to attach the two ends. And of course, I'm gonna add some glue and this is going to be a medium size loop. Can you make a medium size loop too? See? Now I have a big one and I have a medium size one. And the next one is going to be a small one. So this strip I'm going to cut really, really short. You see? 
And then I'm going to take my glue, and you know what we're going to do. We're going to glue this one. And now, boys and girls, I have three loops. I have a large one. I have a medium-sized one and a small one. And now for fun, I'm going to see if I could fit these loops together to make a special design. Do it with me at home. Watch. I'm going to take my medium size one and put it into the big one. You see? And then I'm going to take my teeny one and I'm going to put it in the medium size one. See? And now I get a nice fancy design. And we'll decide what to do with that later. This is just practice, boys and girls. I like my loops. There's something else you can do that's really, really fun making loops. Did you ever make a chain? Watch this. I'm going to make my loop. See? And then I'm going to put another strip through it like that. And now they're attached. Isn't that good? And I'm even going to add a third one. Now what's fun about this, boys and girls, is you can make a chain as long as you want, and you can even use it as a decoration. So now I have three. Aren't they pretty? See? And now my paper went from flat to three-dimensional. Are you working along with me? I hope so. And our next idea is called an accordion fold. You may have already done this. This is really fun. So I'm going to take one of my strips. See? And this is flat, right? And watch how I make it pop out. I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Are you doing it with me? Back and forth. And when you get to the end, let's pop it out. And there, whoa, there's my accordion. See? And now it, it kind of wiggles a little bit. It's, it's fun. Now, if you want to get fancy, I'm going to show you one that's more advanced. I want you to cut two really long strips. So I have one black one here and one blue one. Okay? And then I want you to match up the ends like this, okay? And then we're going to do it this way. Watch. We're going to go back and over and over and over. And you just keep doing it over and over. See, and you just go back and forth and you'll notice the strips are getting smaller. And over and over. Keep doing it until you get to the very end. Are you ready, boys and girls? When you get to the end and it's all folded, you can pull it out and you get a really nice accordion fold that's actually two colors. Isn't that nice? That one's a little harder, so I want you to practice that one, okay? And now I'm going to show you how you can make flat paper into geometric forms. We're going to take a paper like this, a rectangle or a square, and make it into a cylinder. A cylinder is like a tube. So watch how I do it. I'm going to cut mine a little smaller. And do you see this? 
How do you think I can make a tube out of this? Yes, that's right. I can roll the paper just like that. And then I get a tube. Now it's three dimensional. So to attach it, I'm going to put glue right along the edge right there. And let's see if it glues. And if it keeps popping open, what you can do, you have to rub it a little bit. But if it does pop open, you can put a little piece of tape there to secure it. So now I have a tube. Another geometric shape is a cone. You know, when you eat an ice cream cone, it's kind of like a triangle, but it pops out. So for our cone, we're going to take another rectangle or a square. And do you know what we're going to do with this? I want you to roll it like that, you see? So it has a pointy end, sort of like a little hat. I think I need a little tape on that one. So now I have a cone, but this part over here is a little messy. So I'm going to gently squeeze it, and then I'm going to cut it across so the end is even. See, and now I have a nice cone shape. I don't know, what could I use that for? Maybe it's a little hat. And now I'm going to show you how you can take this paper and make just about any geometric shape pop up. So here's my flat paper, and I'm going to fold it once, twice, three times, and now when I attach it, I get like a little tent, and there's a triangle, right? See? And I'm going to put that together. Now the fun thing about folding paper is that the possibilities are endless. I just showed you some basic ideas to get you started, okay? So we did some loops. And we did an accordion fold. And we made some geometric shapes. And now we're going to actually make our art project. We're going to make a sculpture park today. A park, of course, is a place you can play. But this park is special because there's all sorts of wondrous sculptures in it. And we're going to make a model for it. So the first thing I want you to do is find a piece of paper for the ground. I chose green because that would look nice for grass. And before I make any of the sculptures pop up, I am going to lay out the place. Mm -hmm. So watch. This is the grass in my park. And now I am going to make a road or, or a little path so people can walk through the park. And I think I'll make it out of black. And I think it would be nice to have some swirly roads. When you lay out your sculpture park, you can do it however you want. But the idea is to first create the placement of the grounds. That's called a layout. So there's one path. And here's another path. And I'm going to glue these down. So here's the path in my garden. And now for extra fun, I'm going to make a little pond. So I'm going to make the water out of glue. And I'm going to give my pond a little swirly shape. And you'll notice I'm really not drawing lines and then cutting it. I'm just cutting it with my scissor and making it up as I go along. So here's my pond. Always put the glue on the item that you're gluing. And there we go. I am going to make some pop-up sculptures in my park. Now I decided this is the entrance to my park. So I'm going to put a little curve there to show 
you know, you walk under that arch when you go into the park. And if you want anything to pop up, you can bend it, but you can't put glue along the edge because there's just nothing to glue it to. So I want you to fold it like this, see, and make a little tab. Then you can put your glue along the tab. See? And just glue that one part and then pop it up and make a tab on the other side. See? And glue it like that. And then this is where the people See, they walk through there to get to the park. Now, what exciting sculptures put, should I put? I think this loop that I made before, this could be nice. I'm going to put this sculpture right in the middle of the pond. Wow, that's nice. So when you, you look at it, you get a surprise. You see that in the pond. Where can I put my accordion fold? Maybe I'll put that over here. So as you're walking along the path, gluing down one end, I think it would be fun when you come into the park to walk under the accordion sculpture. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that looks good. I'm just gonna pop it up a little more so now the people walk through here and then they walk through that sculpture as well. Now, boys and girls, I'm wondering what can I do with these loops that I made before? Hmm, maybe I can make that into a sculpture over here. You don't have to use the things that you made, but it could be fun since you already made them, right? Hmm, I like how that looks. That looks nice. Now, I want to put this cylinder on my sculpture park to make a really big tower. But if I only put the glue along the edge, it's not going to work because there's really nothing to glue. So, this is what I want you to do if you want to glue the cylinder. I want you to cut little tabs, you see, like that. Just tiny, about a quarter of an inch and do it all the way around. And take your time with this because this takes work. And you do it all the way around very slowly and try to make them the same size. Then when you're done, I want you to fold them all the way out like this. See? boys and girls, I am going to put glue on all these little spots and then I can glue it wherever I want it to go. Where should I put the tower? Should I put it over here? Should I? I think I'm going to put it over there. Okay? So this takes some patience and you very slowly put glue on each tab. where you want it to go and press those tabs down you see and if you need a little tape here and there that's fine what can I do with my cone now I can make the cone into a rooftop that could be nice I could make the cone into a little teepee house that could be nice I could also turn the cone on its side, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the cone here because this is like a special little seat that people are allowed to go into. 
What are you putting in your sculpture park? Are you having fun? Oh, I have this accordion fold. What, oh, I know. I'm going to attach that here and make it extra exciting so it attaches the pond. Boys and girls, this is where you really get to use your creativity. You can use your strips to connect different parts of your sculpture. So for example, maybe I'll take this red strip and make another accordion fold. See, now I can build Maybe I could take this strip and make it even longer. I wonder what happens if I twirl this like this. and girls do you see how the sky's the limit you can really create anything you want from your imagination for my finishing touch I'm gonna make two children who can play in the sculpture park so I'm just gonna draw them really really simply going to cut out the children. And now I'm going to decide where do the children go. And I can make a little tab right here. You can see how big everything is compared to the size of the children, right? Girls, I really had fun making this sculpture park. And what's nice about it is when you make your project, you can look at it from all different sides. Wherever you look at it, it's going to look different. And you can really imagine that you're playing in the sculpture park with the kids. I hope you had fun making your project. I'd have fun making mine. Use your imagination. Bye, boys and girls.